Dear friends, uh, in this particular problem, we are going to talk about a very interesting issue. I have seen a lot of software engineering bugs that happens because of uh, some of the code like this, where people have coded and everything looks perfect for a correct answer. However, when you run the code, you will see a very, very different outcome. Okay. So let's look into a piece of code, which is a very good piece of code in real life for software developers. Okay. So here you have, a, you have an integer. So we are doing an integer, which is 4K, 4 into this, right, 1024. And we are simply trying to do some computations here. We are trying to multiply by with some values and other value, and then try to look into our uh, final answer. So this is a very simplified version of a large problem where when you have think about a piece of code where you have you know approximately say say 50 or 100 lines of code you know in between and then everything looks fine but all of a sudden you get a very different answer actually okay. So uh, this is a good code uh, my request for request to you is to uh, pause this and please uh, look into this code analyze the code and if needed compile and run the code analysis is far more important than running the code okay and then try to see what could be the answer okay so since uh, i i try to give certain hints here okay so what you have to always look into uh, you have to look into what is the data type and what kind of operations and computations we are doing in the data type and whether it is within the valid range of operations and after that you should try to deduce the answer okay so i hope you have already done the pause and a resume on this video if not you should do it and then we'll jump into the lab i'm going into the lab to explain to run this code and then explain the solution and the answer for that so this is a program number nine you can see this program i have done a computation okay now what happens here is when you try to compile this code right so when you try to compile this code compilation simply goes through and some of the compiler it is always possible that they might uh, give some some warnings okay but uh, the thing is you have to analyze the code that is very important okay compilation went through but when you run the code you see the answer is false right and this is a surprise because you already have a 4k you multiply the 4k with one more value one more value so you have a very large k right? very large data uh, integer value here actually okay so what's going wrong here is is, is a very interesting problem here right okay so I will just try to debug it. So a lot of people, what happens is when they start debugging, they will try to see what is the value. They will try to print the values, right, basically. So we will be like ordinary programmer. We will try to print the value. Okay, so we can simply print the value x is equal to percentage x, right, and then displaying x. I did a hexadecimal. You can do a decimal also, no problem. Both are okay for me, actually, right, okay whatever you print here we, we should get the answer okay so we are compiling and then you get a value of zero so what's wrong in this particular code okay so i think things are fine so let's do some more iterative steps what is the meaning of iterative steps i will simply print the value here right so we will say x1 the first one right so it's iteration number one here and this is our iteration number two for example right okay so we are compiling so you got the value of thousand in the first case and then you got the value of uh, zero in the second case isn't it any idea why you got thousand you might be expecting a different answer so a lot of people i have seen that uh, they will be thinking it will be like a four thousand okay here yeah, something like that four zero nine six basically okay now i'm representing the data in a hexadecimal notation so what I should do is for some of you who are watching this video and getting confused with hexadecimal representations, let's make it simpler. D as a decimal, I think a lot of people are used to decimal actually. Okay, so let's compile it further. So first thing is don't get worried. Okay, you have to just worry about whether we understand hexa or not. Okay, but now I have made things simpler, so you will have some iteration. So you get 4096. Okay, so which is perfect, right? So this is hexa, and then this is a decimal representation for that actually. 
Now, first thing was fine. What about the second cut? Second cut, we had a problem. So, we'll debug it further, right? What is the way to debug it further? The way to debug it further is basically do step by step multiplication actually right and then try to print it once again so a lot of people do that i think absolutely nothing wrong in what they are doing actually i have seen people do like this they say okay let me debug it further multiply it once again and then so we'll do a step by step multiplication okay so so we do the third step now print up is the third iteration for example right so you're doing all these things you can use debugger you can uh, use whatever logic you want right basically Compile it and we run it. So what you see is it is definitely correct. This is definitely correct. The third one we have a problem, right? So I repeat, we are seeing some problem somewhere. Okay, so we have to understand interesting things now. First thing what I can do is I can now start thinking what's wrong. Okay, so let's see what this explanation could be for this so-called wrong answer. Okay. So we are multiplying 4 by 1024 and then once again 1024 and once again 1024. Right? So this is what we are doing. Okay. So we are trying to really do a 4 into what is 1024? It's a kilobyte and then it's another kilobyte and then it's another kilobyte. Okay. So when you do like this, we are essentially looking at a value which is 4 gig. 4 gig actually okay 4 gig right so the question is what is the maximum value an integer can hold what is an integer integer is a representation in memory is a 4 byte 4 byte is how many bits it is 32 bits right when you talk about 32 bits of data so we are looking at 2 raised to the power 32 minus 1 as a maximum possible integral value which is definitely a unsigned integral value okay so this is the highest possible value that you can store as an unsigned value as an integer we have done a sign here okay we can we can do an unsigned absolutely nothing wrong in that okay but issues are issues so we have to solve it actually right okay so we will see this even though we do an unsigned in this example when you run this code you might have an answer which is still zero the reason is we are just one shot the maximum that you can store is 2 to the power 32 minus 1 right and this is what this is 4 gig 4 gig is absolutely 2 to the power 32 so if you use your calculator and then this right sorry if you do a calculator you will know that 2 to the power 32 is a 4 gig right so what is 4g so when you see this, this is 2 to the power 2 and then 2 to the power 10 and then 2 to the power 10 and then 2 to the power 10, right? So that's what we are looking at. 2 to the. So when you break it further down, this is 1 multiplied by 2 to the power 10, which is kilo, another 2 to the power 10, another k, kilo, and then 2 to the power 10, right? So mathematically, yeah, you already know that this is 4k, actually, correct? 4, sorry, uh, 4 into a k and then another k, another k, so kilobyte so 4 kilobyte megabyte giga gig so this is the value 232 but we cannot store it here actually so unsigned integer or assigned integer just won't help okay so remember that yeah so the problem lies not in in our code logic the problem lies in the boundary in which and compiler was very silent on this because compiler will not substitute and evaluate and give you a warning like this okay because we are doing step by step operations to display certain values Suppose you wanted compiler to play a certain role for your, you know, rescue operations actually, right? So suppose I say integer, let's go back into integer x, simply multiply like this, okay? So because now we are telling compiler to compute and store, you know, basically it will, it will compute and store the value. So simply say 10, sorry, 1024, right? And then we'll ignore all these things, we'll just do our final this one right so we are trying to compile and try to see what compiler is throwing as an answer for us uh, we will just display once the value of x after computation okay so this is interesting because when when you are compiling when you are doing this calculation right yeah something can be deduced uh, by by the compiler okay so when do this compiler says we have a problem we have an integer overflow it, it immediately knows that you know the results is an overflow condition we are resulting in a zero so this line is a culprit here okay However, as I told you, our original code was different. What was our original code? Our original code was 
we are simply multiplying and then we do a further computations which is much beyond the scope during compile time this is more like a run time actually right okay so now you pretty much know why the answer is false not true it looks true but not true okay in reality there is a lot of bugs like this we, we face in in some cases in software engineering software development where we overflow not that we multiply hard code these values just because we run our software for for many many months many years and and sometime during real time events these values simply overflow right so we have to be aware of that fact and try to you know make sure that we never overflow or underflow in our programming situations so thank you very much uh, for watching this video and um, i will see you in another video soon have a good day